Hey everybody, welcome back to Chip Stock Investor. Today, we're gonna to focus on not a chip stock. Yep, this is biotech and big pharma. Chip Stock Investor Edition. I'm, I'm gonna play host and ask questions today, and Casey's going to play analyst. Here's the key points that we're going to go through. <laughs> what does Vertex do? What's in the pipeline for this biotech company? Is this the next big biotech juggernaut? Uh, Vertex is already quite large. It's been a top growth name in this industry, but at $100 billion, there's a lot of companies that are much bigger than that in healthcare. Can they keep growing? And then is this going to be a chip stock investor, best non-chip stock of 2025? Make sure you watch to the end of the video. Okay, so I, I wanna ask this question first, Casey. How did this video even come about in the first place? Vertex, really, for chip stock investor? Great question, Nick. And the reason we are talking about Vertex Pharmaceuticals is because I started down this rabbit hole with CRISPR Therapeutics. And if you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out. It's an interesting one. We've been discussing biotech and healthcare a little more frequently over on Discord with our community. If you want access to that, you can join via the link below in Kofi or here on YouTube for Semiconductor Insider, just five bucks a month, gets you access to that. And we've had some great questions by community members. Some community members have also suggested that we start following some of these companies and I'm having fun doing it because I have a background in healthcare, but there is a lot to learn with Vertex Pharmaceuticals. We're just gonna scratch the surface in today's video. Yeah, and I might add, we do feel like this healthcare space is kind of a natural segue for chip stock investor. We had a recent Q and A session where we explained why why we feel that way. So check that out. All right, Casey. So how does Vertex pay the bills right now? How do they make money? What do they make money off of? So just as a briefer, Vertex Pharmaceuticals focuses on medicines for people with very serious illnesses. And they have a focus in some specialty markets like cystic fibrosis and sickle cell disease currently. They also have some interest in other disease processes, a APOL1 mediated kidney disease, type one diabetes, and also in pain, which we'll discuss all of that briefly here in just a little bit. But to answer your question, Nick, what has been paying for everything at Vertex Pharmaceuticals is their cystic fibrosis medications. They have four approved cystic fibrosis medications currently. Cystic fibrosis affects about 92,000 patients. And so Vertex actually provides medications to the vast majority of those with cystic fibrosis. They also have a couple of other therapies that they're working on with CF that are in various phases of the clinical trial program. But as you can see, Cystic fibrosis medications and treatments have been paying the bills. You can see that Trifecta Calf Trio is the biggest revenue generator in the last few years. Okay, I want to ask you about the research that you did on CRISPR that kind of got us to this point where we're here sitting here recording this video and this new treatment for a completely different type of disease that is kind of ramping up treatment for, uh, I think about 20 patients at this point are getting ready to use some new treatment that's been developed by Vertex and CRISPR together. Yeah, exactly. That treatment is called Kajjevi and Vertex and CRISPR are in co-development with this to treat people with sickle cell disease or transfusion dependent thalassemia. Big words that. I'm not gonna go into, but blood diseases that cause patients a lot of pain and some serious suffering throughout their lifespan. Vertex estimates that there's about 35,000 people in the United States with CSD or sickle cell disease or TDT, that really long name, I don't have to say again. Vertex estimates that there are about 35,000 people with severe sickle cell disease or that transfusion dependent thalassemia in the United States and Europe and then in Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, which is the other area that they've got a treatment approved in, they figure another 23,000 people, people that could be treated with this very unique and very first treatment using CRISPR technology. Hmm. Interesting. Now, I know that in the research here, in the support role I was playing, extreme support role I was playing on this, Bluebird Bio 
is a small biotech company that has also been working on something for sickle cell disease. It hasn't worked out so well for them. It seems like their treatment is a bit more expensive. So at this point, it seems like if Vertex can get Kajjevi ramped up and begin treating more people, this could provide the next big spurt of growth, of revenue growth. Yeah, absolutely. They currently only have about 35 authorized treatment centers for use with this Kajjevi medication, but they plan on having up to 75 centers in the near future. I don't know how long that's going to take to ramp up to that number exactly, but it seems that they have a lot of growth potential. The current cost of treatment for Vertex's Kajjevi is $2.2 million, and Bluebird Bio is $3.1 million. So there's a big discrepancy between the two costs of these treatments. Yeah, as we talked about, we were doing uh, a bit on Twist Biosciences and their semiconductor technology and synthesized DNA. We talked about one key area to look at if you're looking for um, a company that's able to grow very, very large. They need access to healthcare providers. And in the U.S., that means going through the gatekeepers of patient payments, insurance providers. So uh, that's what Vertex is, I guess, kind of working on. That's one of the hurdles uh, that they're going to have to go through with getting Kasjevi ramped up. Now, Casey, I know there's a couple other things in the pipeline as well, maybe a little bit further down the road before they start kicking in. Yes. Vertex has some really interesting things in the pipeline. First thing is treatment for type one diabetes. They're currently in phase one or two of clinical trials for treatments related to this disease process. Around 8.4 million people are estimated to suffer from type one diabetes. So this would be a very significant growth driver for Vertex as well. The second thing is pain control. There's been a lot of focus on pain control during the opioid crisis, especially in the United States. And you've probably seen some of the documentaries or docu-series on Netflix regarding this. So pain, as you may know, is very big business. They have a new drug called Suzetrogene that's aimed for pain control. This is actually going to be put before regulators in January of 2025, hopefully for approval at that time. It's a non-opioid pain medication, and it will be used to treat moderate to severe pain. This is potentially a really big deal, not just for Vertex, but for people. So this is good stuff. Something definitely I think we're interested in, in watching and seeing how it pans out. This is an overview that Vertex provides of all of the treatments that they have in various stages of the clinical trials. On the left, you can see their next wave treatments, and all the way on the right, you can see what's been approved. It's the four cystic fibrosis medications, as well as the treatment Kesjevi for sickle cell disease and uh, TDT as well. Okay, so one thing that I think we always have to consider if you're looking at a biotech or big pharma business is patents, especially when you're getting paid in the U.S. Uh, patents are a big deal. Payments for treatments are quite high in the U.S. just because of the structure of the business. What's the length of time remaining on some of these patents for cystic fibrosis and then the new SCD and TDT treatment? Here's a breakdown that Vertex supplied during their 2023 10K filing. The top three are some of their older cystic fibrosis treatments expiring in 2027 and 2030. And then CAFTA and CAFTRIO, that's where you saw that big purple bar for the revenue, their biggest player in this space, now doesn't have a patent release until 2037. The newest treatment, Kesjevi, not till 2035. Something to keep in mind, um, we'll get into valuation of Vertex here in a little bit, but uh, when you're thinking about revenue and profitability, these patent expirations are a key factor when, when considering how long a company can make top dollar on these things. Now, if you're interested in the full breakdown, Casey has a list of competitors and who's who in, in some of these different treatments that Vertex is providing. But let's maybe for a moment here, just skip to acquisitions before we get into the financials, because there've been a few of them the last few years. What, what's going on here? So the first two that we'll show you is Sema Therapeutics, and the second is Viasite. 
And these are very strategic acquisitions for Vertex. Both of these acquisitions tie into that treatment for type 1 diabetes. Further, with the acquisition of Viacite, Vertex essentially leveled the competition in type 1 diabetes curative measures. And then they most recently announced the acquisition of Alpine Immune Sciences, which focuses on protein-based immunotherapies. Okay, so basically what's happening here is Vertex knows that the top dollar that they get for those cystic fibrosis treatments won't last for forever. And so they're filling up their pipeline with future ways to diversify their revenue streams and their, their profits. Yeah. Before we continue, we want to give you a note from our sponsor of today's video, public.com. Interest rates are falling, but you can still lock in a 6% or higher yield with a bond account at public.com. 6% or higher. That's a pretty big deal now that the Fed has made its first interest rate cut in several years and has indicated it will continue to cut rates in support of the economy. So a bond account from public.com could allow you to lock in 6% or higher yield with a diversified portfolio of high yield investment grade corporate bonds without having to pick individual bonds yourself. So maybe while some others are watching their returns shrink, you can sit back with your regular interest payments. But you might want to act fast because your yield is not locked in until you invest. Lock in a 6% or higher yield with a new bond account. Only at public.com forward slash CSI. So let's talk about this Alpine uh, acquisition. Seems like a good fit for the immunotherapy stuff. It kind of goes hand in hand with what they're doing already. So, so that's interesting. A couple of notes here though, this Alpine acquisition was actually just recently completed. And you notice here this big giant increase in research and development expenses for Vertex in 2024. We'll show you what that's done to the profitability, but this is a little bit different type of acquisition. So typically when a business makes a purchase, they're acquiring another company and the accounting is different. In this case, when Vertex acquired Alpine, they were making what's called an asset acquisition. And with the purchase of that asset, Vertex was buying Alpine's in-process research and development, IP, R&D. And that gets expensed as an operating expense. We don't need to go into the tax ramifications of this. Nobody clicked on this video to watch a video about accounting. I just thought this was important to call out here before we go into some of the financials. This is the reason why Vertex is reporting a steep loss this year. It's because of the accounting involved with the Alpine purchase. Tell me about the growth profile of this business for the rest of 2024 and beyond. Here's Vertex's most recent guidance in the latest earnings report. You can see that they increased the range of their total product revenue guidance to 10.65 to 10.85 billion. Their previous range was 10.5 to 10.75. And they said the reason for that was they expect to have continued growth in cystic fibrosis, as well as contribution in the second half of the year from that revenue from Cash Jebby. Okay, let's, let's jump to some financials then. Pretty epic run in revenue growth over the last decade that's catapulted Vertex into one of the largest biotech companies in the world. However, revenue has started to slow down. That's just the cystic fibrosis treatments starting to mature a bit, but still very much a growth company though. Expected 9% year over year growth this year in sales. Probably by our estimation, I guess something thereabouts the same for 2025, high single digit growth rate. Our estimate is that they will have a baseline of 4 billion in net income and free cash flow in 2025. All right, so this is uh, another interesting point here on their balance sheet. No debt, lots of cash and short-term investments. They plowed a lot of that, uh, nearly $4.5 billion into longer-term investments, probably just locking in some, some longer-term interest rates on cash they don't expect to need in the coming years. Of course, they paid some cash for Alpine, some research and development costs, uh, some ramp-up costs associated with Kazjevi. But overall, uh, throughout this period of I guess maybe elevated expenses as they try to diversify, as they try to get a new treatment up and running. They actually have continued to repurchase stock, not just to offset employee stock-based compensation, but actually reducing the share count. All of this kind of adds up in my mind to a company that has really good visibility into what's coming down the pike. They think they're going to continue growing. 
they're going to return to profitability and they're willing to throw cash into stock repurchases. Uh, this this just seems like uh, a pretty good sign to me putting my CFO cap on here. So really healthy looking financials here. And then let's just maybe look at valuation using that baseline of 4 billion net income and free cash flow for 2025 that we think Vertex should be able to hit next year. Again, you can find these in Casey's full research notes if you're a semiconductor insider, we'll just go through these really quickly. This is a reverse discounted cash flow to try to figure out what makes the stock fair value today. We have 9% revenue growth through the next three years, 2024, 25, and 26. An expectation that earnings before interest and tax profit margins return to pre-Alpine acquisition levels next year, and then just 2% or less growth into perpetuity after 2026. That's what gets us to roughly around the fair value stock price today. Casey, how do you feel about this company after doing your deep dive? It looks pretty darn cheap, <laughs> is what I would say. Normally, I do not like pharmaceutical companies at all. This is not something I'm really interested in to it as an investment, but this one actually looks like a pretty good deal. Is it going to be a top non-chip stock pick for 2025? It might be. We'll mm. have to see how the year finishes out. Sneak peek, folks, perhaps three months early. Congrats if you happen to check out this video. And to all of you already Vertex shareholders, good call. Yeah, excellent. Fantastic call. It's been quite the run. Make sure you check out our sponsor of today's video, public.com. Link is in the description below. And if you're interested in our full expanded video notes, live Q&A sessions, and access to our Discord channel, check out Semiconductor Insider membership, just five bucks a month. See you again soon at Chipstock Investor. With maybe some more chip stocks next time. 